Each team member, each person has to know that from the very top of the organization, they are valued. Welcome to another edition of Friday Five with Dave Adams. In keeping with our new approach in 2021, we'll be speaking with Tiffany Ford and Candy Keene from University of Michigan Credit Union about how to create a, and maintain a great corporate culture and foster an environment for attracting and retaining top talent. Tiffany Ford has been a CEO of UMCU since 2011. The credit union has $1.1 billion in assets and over 100,000 members, 104,000 to be exact. And I think many of you know that prior to joining UMCU as its CEO, Tiffany actually worked at the fierce rival university credit union, MSU Federal Credit Union, from 2000 to 2011. Candy Keene is the Vice President of Talent Development and Human Resources. She's been with the credit union since 1995. And during that time, she served in various positions, including accounting, branch operations, contact center, and as a VP of lending. During her tenure there since 1995, she's seen the credit union grow from 120 million in assets to 1.1 billion. I know you're gonna enjoy this conversation with my friends, Tiffany Ford and Candy Keene from UMCU. Well, Tiffany and Candy, welcome to the broadcast. It's great to have you on. Thank, Thank you, you, Dave. Thank you yeah. for having us. It's great to see you. Great to see you as well. Happy New Year. We can keep saying that. Um, we're all looking forward to uh, better times in 2021 on numerous fronts. And we're really looking with the Friday Five broadcast to get a bit deeper into operational issues and important success drivers. So for the, fir for the first quarter of the year, we'll be talking to credit and leaders about culture, what constitutes a great organizational climate, how do we attract and retain the best and brightest and any uh, challenges and opportunities related to human resources that you want to talk about. So Tiffany, let me start with you as CEO and Candy Keene in, in your capacity as a vice president of talent development and HR. Let's hear your, your kind of high level perspectives on what constitutes a great company culture. Well, thank you, Dave, and thanks for having us and Happy New Year to you. Um, from our perspective, the, the big thing that, you know, we focus in on is teamwork. Um, we have an environment where we feel like, we, and I tell every employee, we want you to bring your best self to UMCU every day and be a part of this great team. And in return, we're going to bring our best self, the best organization that we can be to you. And so we want to lean on each other. Um, uh, as teammates. And so we really, really nurture a culture of teamwork and letting the each team member know, bring your best self to UMCU. And, you know, 2020 has been a year, well, was a year where we were able to really grow strong as a team. So for us, it's teamwork, Dave. And so Candy, you're part of the inner circle team with your CEO, Tiffany. In, in fostering that team environment? How do, you, how do you do that effectively at UMCU? Most importantly, what we have to do is value our team. They have to come in every day and know that we value them both personally, professionally, and then they in turn can give that back to our members. Awesome. So one of the interesting transitional things with the COVID environment that will live on probably for a long time to come is having more of our employees work from home. In the case of credit unions, like many retail operations, you don't have the luxury of saying, okay, we're all gonna work from home. We're gonna be, we're gonna be Amazon, right? You don't have that. Um, so how do you approach the blend of what needs to be in-person operational versus allowing more and more of your employees to work from home. How are you managing that? Well, you know, Dave, um, one of the things I, I was someone in, in, you know, prior to COVID that was like, I don't know how I would feel about, you know, working from home. We actually have a joke about it in our office because 
We were gonna do a survey in um, February about work from home. Candy wanted to do a survey and I'm like, no time out, we need to hold on that. And then the pandemic hit. So lo and behold, she got the results of her survey. Um, but uh, saying all that to say, we, our team has demonstrated an, an incredible work ethic. And we've had to tell them, you know, pull away from your computer, pull away um, to take a break because they really have been working nonstop. And so we've been finding that our team is reliable, dependable, more productive, but we need to balance things like, you know, meeting each other in the hallway and having those kind of, uh, you know, casual conversations to keep the, the momentum and the culture going. So um, we will continue to work remotely, but we, we will have a blended operation. Definitely, we'll have a blend of it. So Candy, with a blended operation, how do you achieve the, the virtual water cooler or the virtual team building activities uh, where you have employees who are able to gather versus those who participate remotely. Sure, it's been really critical for us to keep our employees connected as a team. So, you know, we, we did some events, you know, that were virtual. We've started a Facebook page where the team can connect and just, you know, non-work and just keep them talking and chatting with each other. Um, most recently in December, having our holiday party, which was a trivia, you know, holiday music trivia. And boy, the teamwork and competitiveness came out in all of them. And we just had so much fun. And you could see it in them that they needed that connection with each other. And Candy, so what about the, the yeah. 20 second timeout as well, or the timeout huddle that we have, um, kind of like a virtual break room that the team members can just go into yep. and see who's hanging out there. Yep, we call it our halftime huddle. And so every Wednesday, talent hosts that, where anybody can just come in during your lunch hour and chat with other people. And it's just, again, a way, that's what we were trying to create is that virtual water cooler. And we won't even talk about how important it was for the University of Michigan football team to have halftime huddles in 2020. We won't, Dave. We're just going to focus in on basketball. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's a new year. Let's look It's forward. a new year. It's a new year. Everything's <laughs> getting better in 2021. So work from home is just one facet of, of COVID. But before I go on to the, the broader topic of, of COVID and how you've had to adapt to that environment and what maybe some silver linings are, let's just stick with the work from home for a minute. And what might the silver lining be or lessons learned or positives that you feel have come out of us being forced to work so remotely? Dave, I can tell you, um, and Candy hit on it when she said we value our team. And I can tell you that working from home has strengthened the UMCU team in a way that being in the office, we never could have experienced this. So even from a leadership perspective, it's important for us to recognize that our team members we want them to be professional, but we sometimes forget that professionals are also people and they deal with real things in life. And having um, worked from home for nine months, we get to see what each other's family is going through. We get to see their home atmosphere. You know, my children could run through here at any moment and my team is all used to that now. Um, and, and so we've all, just become stronger because we've been working from home. And I think that, you know, COVID in and of itself and all of the uncertainty has, has caused people to really recognize that, you know what, we are professionals, but we're people who deal with real life things. And if we can, you know, nurture that as part of our culture and do a better job of taking care and valuing our team members, we only become stronger. Well said. In our organization, one of our guiding principles is the need to humanize and rehumanize the culture. And I think some of what you just described actually has been part of the silver lining of the, the work from home. Thank you for that. Let's, uh, let's uh, shift to COVID more broadly. Um, the operational impact, um, keeping your employees safe, keeping your members safe, when you think of COVID and how, how it's impacted credit and operations, are there other things that you've had to do that are unique or that you've learned from? Uh, maybe speak from an operational perspective a bit more. 
Sure. From an operational perspective, we, so first off, our board, the UMCU board has been extremely supportive of keeping our members safe and keeping the team safe. And so what we've done is um, our lobbies, we were um, appointment only all through the summer. So our lobbies have not been completely open um, during, since March. And uh, as of uh, the end of 2020, we were um, appointment only in the branches and also through the drive throughs So what we've done um, from an operational perspective is we've really tried to pull from some of the restaurant um, services where, you know, you can order ahead and do your pickup um, and, you know, or make an appointment like you would if you were going to the physician's office. So we've tried to implement some of those things into our service delivery. And for the most part, um, our members are grabbing a hold of it. Um, of course, you know, we've had to handle, you know, some um, concerns about the drive through uh, lines being longer. But um, I think the big thing is more of this, what I call, you know, kind of concierge service where you're calling ahead, you're picking up, and we're having things ready for you. I don't know, Candy, if you want to add to that. I, I, the other thing I think that's really important is this is where really listening to your team and hearing what, what operational challenges are you up against and in implementing some things that will make their job easier to serve the members. So keeping that communication open to be able to continually improve the operations has been critical. Well, so I want to expand on each of your thoughts there. First with you, Tiffany, uh, going to an order ahead concierge type environment, appointment only for branches and, and drive-throughs. Are there new technologies or new systems that you've had to embrace? We built a um, appointment uh, form that we place online that our members can go to and they basically can um, uh, complete the form, say what time they want to come, which branch they want to come to, and what service they want to have. And um, what we do is we we receive an email with the information and we call back. If we can handle the member's concern or the request over the phone, then we do so. If not, we schedule a time that makes the most sense for them. We are looking at um, a, um, a more robust scheduling system because we, we built this one in-house. It's really just an online form. Um, so that was one technology that we had to put in place. And then of course, you know, heavier reliance on DocuSign for signing documents and all of that. And then, you know, we moved some things to the drive through It didn't necessarily take technology. It just took us saying, yes, we'll do this, you know, like closing home equity loans through the drive through things like that. Um, so the biggest thing from a technology standpoint was getting this form in place. Thank you. I can, I can see right now some pesky service providers like CU Solutions Group giving you a call to introduce <laughs> you to some more robust technologies. Now, actually, I think that's very innovative what you described. I'm sure most credit unions, especially larger credit unions, have grappled with that and have either had to develop something quickly or use a third party provider. Very interesting. And Candy, back to you. I loved what you said about listening to the team. It's so brutally simple, but so imperative, especially when you're being thrust into a crisis driven by a stay safe, stay home, stay at home order. So what kinds of things have you done? How has it evolved in terms of how you listen to the team to get their feedback on what they need? Well, we definitely started doing some pulse surveys, you know, that we could do quick, short 10 minute or 10 question surveys to, to get some more immediate and quick feedback other than some of the engagement surveys we've done. But one good example I have that was early on is you know, one of our locations, the way the drive through stacked, we were trying to keep one line, lane open for the drive up ATM. But there is an ATM in the front of the building also. So there's two ATMs at the location. But what was happening by trying to keep that one lane up is it wasn't stacking well and it was going out the driveway and down the road. So being there one day, I could hear what the team was saying and see it and come back to senior leadership and say, we need to revisit how we're managing that. Great example. Let's pivot to, okay, pre-pandemic, if we were just having a conversation like we are here about the most important success drivers for human resources and for creating a great culture, just talk in general terms as you approach human resources management, what are the most critical things to manage? 
I mean, Andy, I'll start with, yeah, I, I can start with that. Um, there, there's really four things that I think are most critical. And, you know, the first being hiring the right people. The second being onboarding the right way. The third being developing the right leaders. And then fourth being making sure the team has the right resources and support to do their job. If you can get those four things done, there's going to be, you're going to be successful. Which of those is the most challenging, Tiffany, in your mind? The right, the, the one that is probably the most challenging is um, making sure that you hire the right people. Um, in our market, the Anaba market, um, you know, there's definitely a, a competition for talent. And so I would think that, you know, probably the hardest thing is hiring the right people. But I will also say this, Dave, and I'm going to go back to what Candy said earlier, you know, at a very, very high level, we have to ensure that we are valuing and demonstrating the value that we have for each and every team member. And that really sets the stage for a great culture. And that's communication and authenticity, because you can say it in all kinds of different ways, but if it's not believable, if it's not sincere, if it's not real, uh, you're it's not going to be effective, right? So what are your thoughts? Um, Tiffany, I want to come back to you on how a leader uh, sort of self-develops in terms of authenticity and empathetic listening and those kinds of things. No, thank you for asking that, Dave. You know, I was in a, a, a conference call with some CEOs from all across the nation and um, uh, they represented uh, employer, employers who had won the best and brightest award. And um, they were different industries all, and all, from all across the nation. And the one thing that we all talked about as leaders was that if we can demonstrate that we're willing to be vulnerable um, personally and to let our team members know how much we value them, then the team members will draw from us being authentic in, 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 in us choosing ourselves to be vulnerable, especially given, you know, where we were in 2020. And so I think that, you know, we really have to, we really have to get back to, you know, we are, pe we're all people. And you said it, uh, Dave, Dave, when you said like the, you're humanizing the culture. And I think that if we can really get back there, we'll be so much more successful than we've ever been in corporate America. Yeah, I think leadership in politics, uh, which we won't talk about, the leadership in politics in, in the corporate world, really in any organization, nonprofit or other, um, you know, the simple principles we're talking about, empathetic listening, humility, um, making yourself vulnerable, those are not traits that are natural necessarily for all leaders. And so I think the real lesson for all of us is we need to be able to discover our weaknesses and find ways to get to where we need to be. I, I certainly believe that in my career, um, the world has changed in terms of what expectations are for, for leaders. So it's good to hear those principles from you. So let's wrap up with this, um, UMCU, I have to say is one of the most innovative credit unions that, that I have uh, observed in the way you approach um, your service delivery and the topics we're talking about here, the use of technology and how you evolve your field of membership in a way that focuses on your core, but still makes yourself available to others in the community. So there's a whole litany of things. So let's, let's talk about what you, have done that is disruptive or innovative or what you are considering doing maybe in this area of improving the culture and the employee climate. Innovation. Uh, Tiffany, if you'd start first. Yes. No, thank you, Dave, for the compliment. And, um, you know, I, I think that one of the things that we're really, really focused on for moving forward is how we're going to have this combination of, you know, the remote for remote workforce, and then, um, you know, being um, in the office. And so uh, we're, we've had a lot of dialogue about what that means. I think we're going to move forward with some sort of hoteling system. And I know that that's not anything new or, 
or innovative, but I think that's going to be the best route for us where we have a combination of, you know, people in the office, people at home. And, and so um, I think we're going to be moving forward in that direction. Uh, one of the things that we've also talked about is kind of having like a, um, um, I don't know, kind of, we call it, we're kind of calling it like a playroom or something where we kind of test all of these different technologies and, um, you know, have team members that can be involved in, like, if you think about a child in kind of a sensory room, um, we're thinking about doing something like that so that we can continue to make sure that we're relevant to our membership. And, you know, as technology involves that we're just, you know, kind of keeping ahead. Um, so those are some of the things that we've talked about. Before I go to you, Candy, I love that idea, what you just shared, I think, for my company, CU Solutions Group, but for credit unions and for other companies, it's such a novel concept of getting uh, a team of your employees together to kick the tires on new services or new technologies that you're considering. I think too often as leaders, we do things in this little vacuum where somebody presents something and we give our opinion and then we sort of decide without getting a broader group to give their feedback from the customer or member viewpoint. I love that. Candy, what are your thoughts on innovations that either you've done or that you're considering for the future that have to do with, with culture and employee climate? Yeah, uh, and, and I, I think that you both touched on this a little bit with the, you know, being more human and being more vul vulnerable, but we've really got to work with our leadership team to make sure that they know how to do that. And that we as a group know how we want to implement that going forward and what does that look like for our culture. So, for example, we did mental health training in partnership with the University of Michigan Depression Clinic um, for our leadership team. And now we're looking at, you know, now how do we get that out to the team to make them feel comfortable and understand there are things we can talk about. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a change all across America that every organization is going to have to deal with in some way, shape, or form. I love that. I love the idea of applying innovation to leadership development. I think it's too easy for us to do things the way we've always done them, right? To say, okay, we, we know, uh, you know, basic uh, labor law and basic uh, best practices for, for mentoring and leading, but to actually have really innovative leadership development. I think there's something, there's a real need for that in every organization. I love that. Thank you. Well, thank so I wanna thank you both for the conversation. Uh, maybe I'll give you, you both just an opportunity to just make a, a wrap up comment on anything that I didn't ask or anything that we didn't cover that you think our listeners might be interested in from the perspective of how UMCU is, is approaching this important topic. Tiffany? Yes, thank you, Dave. And again, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, one thing that I think uh, I, I really want to touch on as well, you've heard us say that we really need to value our team members. And, um, you know, there, in 2020, we've learned a lot. We've heard a lot about diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. And we've talked about being vulnerable and authentic. And at UMCU, we are choosing to take a very, very authentic and calculated approach to letting each and every one of our team members know how much we value them. And I think that um, in order for organizations to be successful moving forward, each team member, each individual, each person has to know that from the very top of the organization, they are valued. And so that's our focus to move forward um, in 2021. And we're doing a very calculated approach. We've had to have some very, it starts with the senior leadership team. We've had to have very, very um, sensitive, very um, vulnerable conversations um, so that they know that we're really taking it seriously and that it starts from the very top that each team member is valued. Excellent. Candy, before I give you the last word, I'm going to guide, guide the question a little bit to ask you to offer some final perspective, because we needed to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of this conversation. And maybe you could just wrap up by, and feel free to add to this, Tiffany, um, how UMCU is approaching uh, what is a continuous commitment, obviously, 
to um, diversity, equity, and inclusion? Sure. Um, we, we are focusing in a different way, and it, and it really does start with being genuine and authentic and recognizing that every team member is unique and every team member brings something special to the organization. And it's recognizing that and having everybody feel that they have their own voice. But I'm going to go back to Tiffany's original you know, comment about her relationship with the board and how she values them. The relationship between Tiffany and the board is something that I've never seen and is rare in organizations, the way she values them and they value her. So it definitely starts at the top, meaning it starts with our board. And we feel very, very grateful for that. But it's what is going to allow us to move forward in 2021. Wonderful. Tiffany, what, what would you like to add to the question about DEI as we wrap up? Uh, again, just that it has to be a very uh, genuine and authentic approach. It can't be something that, you know, is in a document. Uh, for us at UMCU, you know, we're, we're kind of like, just show, show me, show me your team, show me out, let me see your team and I'll know if you, if you value each person and, and what does your team say about your culture? And, and so I understand that the documentation is very important, but it goes beyond just a document. It's do you value um, each team member? And the re reality of it is this, for our credit unions to be successful, like when I think about our senior leadership team, Dave, we come from all different cultures, backgrounds, genders, okay? And, and so when we're developing something for our members, I feel confident that we're rolling out something that is a great product for everyone because we've heard all these different perspectives. It's not just filtered in one perspective. And so it's really, really critical that we value each human being, each individual, because we'll be more competitive when we do so. We'll be, yes. we'll be more relevant to our membership. Beautiful, beautifully said. I think that hits, a, hits the nail on the head. Uh, the commitment to diversity really comes from a place of love and understanding and compassion and fairness and doing it is not just the right thing to do but it helps any organization be better aligned with the customer base they serve and so well said well tiffany ford candy keen thank you so much for your perspectives for your leadership and for taking the time to be on friday five with me today thank you so much thank, thank you. you thanks for having us well, what a great conversation with Tiffany Ford and Candy Keene of UMCU Credit Union. They talked about the importance of authenticity and leaders being vulnerable and being empathetic listeners. They talked about the need to value team. I love the concept of a halftime huddle that they use. I loved what Candy had to say about the important facets of human resource management, how we hire, how we onboard, how we develop and how we support our teams. We certainly learned a lot from Tiffany and Candy. I valued the conversation and we look forward to more conversations like these in the first quarter of 2021 as we explore innovative approaches to making sure that we have excellence in our human resource management and the way we foster a great culture and organizational climate for our employees. Thanks for watching Friday Five with Dave Adams.